We're going to continue our discussion on Sunday's massacre inside a church near San Antonio, Texas. Today, the president spoke to reporters while overseas. He called the shooter a very deranged individual. Take a listen. I think that uh, mental health is your problem here. This was a very, based on preliminary reports, very deranged individual. A lot of problems over a long period of time. We have a lot of mental health problems in our country, as do other countries. Joined by Dr. Arthur C. Evans, CEO of the American Psychological Association. Doctor, thanks for joining us again. Good. You heard Thank what you. the president says. He's, he's pretty certain this is a case of mental illness, a deranged person. Well, right now we don't know. The law enforcement is still trying to find out what is going on or what was going on with this gentleman. And um, until we do that, um, you know, we don't know whether mental illness was uh, involved. What do you think, though, somebody in the, you know, at the top of the mental health profession when the president says mental illness, what, what does that do to the people out here who are battling mental illness or treating and trying to help those? Well, you we're always concerned if people um, uh, attribute these kinds of events to people who have mental illness. One of the things we know is that people who have, uh, who, uh, have mental illness are less likely or as likely as the general population to be violent. Uh, and um, that people who have mental illness actually are more, actually 10 times more likely to be victims of violence. So we're always concerned when uh, these kinds of um, uh, statements are, are made out there. Yeah, he doesn't just say that the, the guy's deranged that this is mental illness. What he's saying is it's not a gun issue, and I think that's where a lot of people have problems, okay? Because this is not a fact. I mean, most people that take part in mass shootings have some kind of... of you know, problem upstairs, if you will. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out, right? Well, yeah. Sane yes. people do not go on rooftops and start spraying bullets and killing people. Sure, sure. But what I would say is that there are a lot of issues that are involved here. Certainly guns are a part of it. Uh, mental illness could be a part of it, but we know from other instances that uh, sometimes mental illness isn't involved in some of these uh, mass shootings. So I think we need to wait to see what is going on. It's very unlikely for a person uh, who is this age to be at that age and not have a mental health diagnosis if they have a mental health problem, given uh, when we know um, uh, when mental health issues start to emerge in people. The president may get a lot of support on this. I mean, what this guy did does <laughs> fit a deranged person. Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, I, I think anytime, some, as you said, anytime someone kills another person, something has to be wrong. Sure. That doesn't necessarily mean that the person has a diagnosable mental health. Can challenge. you help us understand the profile, the, the mass shooter that you've seen in this country? Sure. Who is he socioeconomically, sex? What does he look like, race? Who, sure. You know, who, yeah. who is that person? Yeah. So the American Psychological Association did a, an extensive review of the psychological literature and the scientific literature on this. And what we found is that there are a very complex set of issues that are involved in people who um, do these kinds of acts. And what we concluded is that there is no definitive profile of a mass shooter. That, um, as I said, there are a variety of things that are, are at play here. But most but of them seem to be men. You don't hear about women being sure, mass shooters. Sure, sure. But, but here's the thing. We, we really need to have the research to help us figure this, this out. Uh, as you know, in 1996, there was an amendment that was passed in Congress called the Dickey Amendment that made it very difficult for federal agencies to do the research in this area. That has hampered our ability to have the, the facts, the data that will help us to do uh, better prediction. And so that's one of the issues that we think is really important to deal with. Here. You know, the other thing, and this is a question not just for you, but for law enforcement, you know, they wanted you to see something, say something. I mean, what if people had run into this young man, knew that he was having this beef with his, his, his mother-in-law, whatever, what are you supposed to do with that? You call up police, you know, and they'll say, thank you very much, and probably, probably hang up and go on and, and, and take care of the more important business. What are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to be looking out for? Well, uh, that's one of the problems. You know, you, you have the false positive problem. So you can look at people who have, um, who commit these kinds of acts, and you can say, well, there's some general characteristics, but those characteristics apply to a lot of other people. So we need to have better research that helps us to distinguish the people who have those characteristics who are likely to commit those acts and the people who are, who are not likely. And those agencies that come in contact with these people, in this case, the Air Force, they had information that they didn't pass on. Right, and what we know, one of the things we do know from the psychological research is that people who have uh, uh, histories of domestic violence are much more likely to commit these kinds of acts. In fact, if a gun is present in a home where you have um, domestic violence, uh, a woman is five times more likely to be killed 
uh, in that kind of situation. Wow. Hey, thank, thanks for coming in.